Help me unload, load the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unload, un unload, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 funniest Randy Marsh moments. Seal up all the doorways. We must try to protect ourselves from the global warming. There's a rumor going around there might be some internet out there. So we're heading out California way. Oh God, oh God, I'm so startled. Are you startled, Sharon? For this list, we're looking at scenes from South Park where Stan's dad has given us the greatest laughs. Did we forget a classic Randy moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. I am Lord. Because there's fishnet stockings inside your jeans? In my jeans. Randy? Do you have something to tell me? Yeah. A season 18 episode revealed that Randy has been living a double life as both Randy Marsh and pop star Lord. I started singing while I was in there and then I started writing things down. It all started when he wanted to use the women's bathroom, but became a superstar in the process. Yeah, yeah, feeling good on a Wednesday. As the secret begins to come out, he writes the catchy song Push about pushing through adversity and maybe about pushing something else. And yeah, then finally yeah, I used the yeah, auto-tune. Yeah. The gag runs throughout the 18th season, with Sia making a guest appearance as the edited voice of Lord. The real-life Lord herself even praised the portrayal and the episode's themes of transgender acceptance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unload, un unload, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absurd, hilarious, and everything we've come to expect from Randy Marsh. No, no, no. Randy? Ah, I thought you were at the grocery store. Number 19. Managing the Space Cash Who knew a miniature car would cost Earth so much trouble? Randy decides to help Stan build his Pinewood Derby car with a little help from the Large Hadron Collider. When the car blasts off the track and hits light speed, it gets noticed by an alien criminal who visits Earth. Randy hilariously ping-pongs between his efforts to appease the alien and keeping his secret about cheating at the Derby. Dad, you know we can't make the car go as fast as before with only the approved Pinewood Derby kit. Yeah, thanks, Stan, I know that. Well, we have to tell him we used something outside the kit. Do you have any idea how stupid that will make us look? But it's only when he and the others stumble upon the space cache that things take an even crazier turn. Every time the alien police show up to inquire about it, we witness Randy's terrible attempts at concealing the truth. We had some images done of your planet and it appears that one of your poor countries, Mexico, has built 32 new hospitals and seven water parks in the last four days. Oh. Yeah, Mexico, you know, oh, oh, yeah, all of us other countries chipped in and uh, gave Mexico some aid. Add in his discussions with other country leaders on how to use and split the cash, and you are in for some great laughs. Number 18. Don't be stupid. You'll freeze to death. The economy isn't going to matter the day after tomorrow. With all of Randy's wackiness, it's easy to forget that he's actually a geologist. After Stan and Cartman destroy a nearby dam, causing a flood, it's revealed that a global warming catastrophe will happen two days before the day after tomorrow. We, we didn't listen! If only people had listened. The town begins to panic that the weather outside the community center has reached an unreal low, but Randy bravely heads out into the dangerous terrain along with Gerald and Steven. Steven, we've got to keep moving! We're in deep hypothermia, all of us! Naturally, he's bundled in layers in the perfectly average weather, believing himself to be feeling hot due to hypothermia. When Randy gets the other moronic adults on his side, it's always a recipe for a great episode. Don't blame the mayor, Sharon. What about FEMA? I think this whole thing is really their fault. Number 17. Vape Fight To say that Randy despises vaping is an understatement. Take that, stupid vaping! Upon starting his marijuana business, he is infuriated when he finds out that vaping has grown in popularity. When discovering that Stan was in possession of a vape, Randy has had enough. He decides to end the craze himself once and for all by taking down a nearby vape manufacturer. How does he orchestrate the takedown, you might ask? By literally walking in and injuring anyone and everyone in his path. You try and take my way of life? Time to show you some integrity. Integrity? What's integrity? That's what I say. Yeah. Oh yeah, and he caused the entire place to blow up. Now that's integrity. Number 16, Falcorn's death. In this episode, the boys become obsessed with taking down an overpowered character in World of Warcraft who's so strong he can kill game masters and admins. 
not to be left out, Randy starts playing the game as well. Hey, Stan, can I play with you guys? Dad? Yeah, I'm playing from the office. Dad, get off our team speak line! He's eventually tasked with an important mission, to deliver the Sword of a Thousand Truths to his son. Dying in-game after completing his mission, Randy delivers a heartfelt speech to Stan over his mic, complete with painful gurgles and death cries, all in the middle of a Best Buy. You gotta love his commitment. Uh, 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 uh. Number 15. I'm so startled. That's the TV in our living room, still showing commercials right now. What do you think about the television, Shelly? When Randy gets a video camera, he becomes a little overzealous. Okay, he gets a lot overzealous. You excited about dinner, Shelly? Though at first he's just recording everything that happens in the house, he takes it to Randy levels of ridiculous when he refuses to put the camera down during a giant guinea pig attack. Oh god, I'm, I'm so startled. Hilariously parodying found footage horror films, he documents the event and repeatedly declares how startled he is, with an iconic line. Randy, will you put down that camera? We need to figure out what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm so startled. His antics are once again the highlight of the two-part episode, and it just goes to show that allowing Randy to be his obnoxious self is always a recipe for great comedy. Give, give a little peace sign, Shelly. Oh, I know. Hold out your palm so it looks like you're holding the Guinnessaurus Rex. Number 14. Randy Gets Indigenous Randy's attempt to get Christopher Columbus's name removed from as many things as possible hits a snag when people discover he used to be really into Columbus. Here's you dressed as Columbus at a formal dinner, and here's you dressed as Columbus at a football game, and you as Columbus on St. Patrick's Day. Look, I was younger. We were all younger. To counter this, he does what any rational person would do, and makes out with a Native American man before swabbing his mouth for DNA to discover his ancestry. Turns out I'm not totally white. I'm also part Northern Asian and even some Kurdish. I'm a victim of oppression. Unfortunately for him, the man becomes infatuated with him as he tries to hide a secret, ultimately failing, while learning that he is 2.8% Neanderthal. Are we sure it isn't 100%? The Earth wasn't big enough for Neanderthals, so your ancestors just got rid of them, huh? What the hell with all of you? Number 13. Being in a boy band. It turns out that long before Randy became Lord, he had a whole other music career. Upon hearing that his son wants to start a boy band with his friends, Randy is adamant about not letting Stan go through with it. After smashing a cabinet in the living room, we learn about Randy's sad history and find out that he was a member of the Ghetto Avenue Boys. The fact that this oddball geologist was once a super rich and famous music star is funny in and of itself. What you've got is it. Now give it to me cuz. Unfortunately, his career doesn't last long. Before you know it, he loses everything, as shown by a hilarious montage. They said that after all the money we had made, we were in debt to the studio, so they towed my car. See ya. The women all left. See ya. And they took <gasps> back my house. See ya. We feel for Randy, but we can't help but laugh. Number 12. The Hair Club for Men Uh, can I ask a question? Why do we do this? What, what do you mean, why do we do this? It's Easter! Right, so why do we color eggs? Have you ever asked yourself what the Easter Bunny has to do with Jesus? This season 11 gem of an episode did with hilarious results. We learn that St. Peter was actually a rabbit, and Randy is a member of the Hair Club for Men a secret society that protects the truth about Easter. All hail the cute rabbit Snowball! Hail Snowball! The hilarity of this episode is entrenched in the entire story around rabbits and religion. It's difficult for viewers to contain their laughter upon witnessing Randy's serious tone when it comes to Easter, especially while he's wearing a pair of rabbit ears. Stan, you don't seem to understand how serious this is. Randy's insistence on sticking to his guns just makes the episode one of our favorites. Number 11. I thought this was America. How much was bail this time? 100 bucks, no big whoop. Boy, you really beat the crap out of that conifer, Dad. When Stan's Little League team reluctantly dominates baseball season, Randy's storyline parodies sports films by working his way up the fighting dad circuit. Come on, let's go! I'm right here! At every game, he starts a fight with a father from the opposing team and is promptly arrested, even though this is America. What, is this a communist country or something? This is America. Despite feeling discouraged about fighting the Bat Dad at the state championship, Sharon inadvertently inspires him to continue. You wanna break me down? You wanna hear me say it? I'm scared! He has the fight of his life with the Bat Dad, unintentionally saving the day by getting the game thrown and keeping the kids from playing any more games. Once again, his stupidity saves the day. I didn't hear no bell. 
Number 10. Are they zombies or homeless people? Do you have any change? Those are five words Randy Marsh became terrified of. No! I don't have any change! As the town of South Park's homelessness problem worsens, Randy survives being trampled by escaping to the top of a building. In fact, the whole thing starts to become reminiscent of a zombie apocalypse. It's from this we get a series of funny moments where Randy treats certain individuals as he would the undead. You have to let them in, Randy! There isn't enough food for more people up here! Refusing to help some of them, Randy's extreme actions fall right in line with that of a zombie apocalypse survivor. The humor is far darker than we're used to seeing with this character. Sit down, Glenn! Randy, you can't just sit down! Number 9. The Obama Party Yes, I can! Yes, I can! When Barack Obama won the 2008 election against John McCain, Randy was pretty stoked. So much so, in fact, that he leads a raucous party of ecstatic Obama supporters through the streets of South Park, putting an Obama spin on songs like Celebration, Mandy, Hey Mickey, and even Who Let the Dogs Out. Celebrate good Obama, come on! It's Obama, Obama. As the night wears on, he grows more and more drunkenly belligerent, believing his actions no longer have consequences thanks to the election. He parties himself directly into the hospital and out of a job, at which point he disavows his beloved president-elect. God damn it! Obama said things would be different! It's Randy at his most excessive, and we wouldn't have him any other way. Can someone help us? My little brother fell out of the window! <laughs> Number 8. Obsessing over Walmart If I go down there now, there won't be anybody else there. I can have all the bargains to myself. The town of South Park is overjoyed when a Walmart comes to town with its low-priced goods. But no one is more excited than Randy. Yeah. It haunts his dreams until he visits the store at night. And there's nothing more priceless than Randy calling to Stan to show him his new glitter stickers. They were only 99 cents for 15 of them. I couldn't resist. They were only 99 cents. And when it seems like the crushingly monopolized store is taking over, he becomes even further entrapped as he starts working at the Walmart. Dad, what are you doing? You get a discount working here. 10%. That means the bargains are even better. Though he tries to be a hero and ultimately helps the boys defeat it, he's once again distracted by the insanely low prices. The screwdriver set is only $9.98! Come on, Dad! I can't make it, boys! You're gonna have to go on without me! Number 7. Bro Down From what I heard, I figured this show must be really sexy and hot, but I just don't see it happening. Inspired by Matt Stone and Trey Parker's own work on Broadway, this episode follows Randy as he writes a musical, after apparently discovering that these productions can make some women become, well, physically amorous. I took my girl to see that show last week. Got the best hummer of my entire life afterwards. However, some of Broadway's biggest composers, like Stephen Sondheim, take issue with his lack of subtlety. We got wind of your musical. Just what the hell do you think you're doing? Same as you guys. As a result, they bro down and then bro out with Randy, and finally settle on an ethos of respect for all. Take me away, but the climax comes when he clumsily crashes a performance of Wicked as Spider-Man, resulting in some hysterical destruction. Randy's musical, the name of which we cannot repeat here, is truly the stuff that Tonys were made for. Number 6. The Finest Snow in Colorado Okay, okay, look. You busted us. It's a mix of different strains of marijuana we had left over from last season. I know, it's wrong. No, no, no. What is the white stuff on the marijuana? By the time we hit season 23, Randy's weed operation was well established and had already achieved significant progress. So when the mayor shows up asking for help to infuse some holiday spirit in the town, Randy and Towley make some Christmas magic. With a dash of special white snow in their weed, the town becomes lively once again. But with both Jesus and Santa opposing the new ingredient, we get Randy's funniest moment of the episode. We never thought we'd see someone trying to convince both Santa Claus and Jesus to partake in Randy's new locally grown snow, but it's both understated and funny. It's tegrity. Well, maybe we all do need a little tegrity at Christmas time. Number 5. Blockbuster. You are all looking at the new owner of Blockbuster Video. Ever the ambitious idiot? Randy decides to buy a Blockbuster just as streaming services are rising to prominence. Though he's ridiculed by his family and the ghosts that haunt the Blockbuster, he remains adamant about running the store. 
According to industry experts, many rural areas don't have the bandwidth to support DVD quality video and streaming services. It is a hilarious descent into madness, imitating scenes from The Shining to absurd perfection. Eventually, he's terrorizing a Halloween party via an iPad on FaceTime and babbling nonsensically in the snow. By the end, he's been frozen outside the video rental store a la Jack Torrance, but at least he got some Chicken McNuggets out of it. What do you want from McDonald's? Chicken Nuggets. Number 4. Randy Becomes That Guy Are we even allowed to laugh at this? In this Season 11 episode, Randy's visit to Wheel of Fortune goes off the rails in the worst way possible. Oh. Ooh. Oh, naggers, of course. Mistaking the word naggers for something far more racially charged, Randy's life is turned upside down. From apologizing to Jesse Jackson to being attacked by some countrymen, you want to laugh at his misfortune, but parts of us also feel a little guilty. The contrast of these two feelings helps drive home the episode's strong point about the view of racism in today's world. Who would have thought you could smile and cringe at the same time? Hey, what do you think you're doing? I just need some aspirin. You aren't welcome in this store. Number three, the biggest crap. Gross, Dad, sick! All right, will you flush the toilet now? What would a South Park list be without the events that transpired in more crap? Sharon, you gotta come see this. Randy couldn't be prouder of his enormous crap, calling the European Fecal Standards and Measurements Office to confirm that it is indeed the world's biggest. Hello, 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 hello. Unfortunately for him, Bono immediately steals his thunder with an even bigger crap, but Randy persists. With a diet of P.F. Chang's, he manages to curate a crap even bigger than the original record, which, as it turns out, was Bono himself. It's the show at its best and grossest, managing to self-deprecate while also churning out plenty of laughs. What more could you expect from an Emmy-winning series? Number 2. Hippity Hop Move over, Segway. The human space hopper is the new way around town. When KFC closes its doors in South Park, it's replaced by a marijuana dispensary. Randy's joy quickly turns sour as he learns his doctor won't prescribe it to him unless he has cancer. Well, so doctor, how do most people get cancer? Well, there's a lot of ways you can get cancer. Yeah, but what's the quickest way? The chuckles start when we see the ridiculous ways Randy attempts to get cancer. Just gonna get a little bit of cancer, Stan. Tell Mom it's okay. But when Randy and other men in town find themselves bouncing down the road using their bodies as space hoppers, the laughs turn hysterical. Throw in a great music choice and you have a recipe for on-the-floor laughs. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Randy's Trippy Nightmare. Winnie the Pooh never looked so scary. Ah! Winnie the Pooh! Winnie the Pooh! Night Out with Mickey Mouse. Is this where it all started? Well, you sure know how to party, Mick. Oh my god, look at her! <laughs> she is so hot! I think that's a bat. Yeah, it's a bat! It's a mouse with wings! Obsessed much? Randy should stick to his day job. Cream freeze, cafeteria freeze, la, 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 freeze. Getting pulled over. This gem might be his most memorable one-liner. License and registration, please. What seems to be the officer problem? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Spooky Ghost When Randy packs the family up to head to California due to a townwide internet outage, we get to see a different side of Stan's dad. Upon discovering an internet refugee camp, Randy is disappointed to learn that they only get 40 seconds each. Oh, how am I supposed to see internet porn that way? But for Randy, 40 seconds is simply not enough. Upon sneaking in to get access to the camp's computer, Randy gets unfettered access to the web and finally finds a way to let himself go. Oh, oh, oh. What is that? Sounds like someone's being attacked by a tiger. Between the roars from the office and the reaction from seeing Randy in the chair, everything he does in this episode is pure comedy gold. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.